welcome this is going to be a tutorial on the things we did in class today the date was well still is the 6th of September we didn't have much time today unfortunately but uh, maybe we'll make up for it next week alright so one of the things we did today that we didn't do before was use a background image instead of a plane. I'm going to show you how to do this again but this is just going to be for your future reference if you decide to keep doing this as a hobby or whatever because we're not going to be doing this again in class. It seemed to cause more problems than it solved so we're just going to be using textured planes for our images to model off of from here on out. All right, but I will show you how we did that again. So what we do is we select the image that, uh, well, the viewport that supports the image we're going to use. So for example, if we have an image of some object from top down, well, we would use the top view. If we have a profile image, we would probably use left. And if we have a frontal v image, we would use the front view. Since we're working with our Swiss Army knife still, what we would do is go to the top, go to Views, Viewport Configuration. Again, mine is different than yours. You have 2014, I use 2013. We would say Use Files, go into Files and select the file we want to use. And yours would be here, C, and it would say, for example, I think it was what knife images or something and that is not where mine are however and I believe that mine are somewhere in here I guess I have no idea where they are I thought they were just on the, uh, my C drive but I guess not. Hmm. Oh, they're in my images. That's where they are. That's where they are. Okay. So, my images, knife, and we were working with knife body today. And for me, all I have to do is say I want to match the bitmap. This is important. Select this. If you ever you do this, select match bitmap. For me, I can just do this. You couldn't do that. But as we've seen today, this causes a problem because if we rotate, the image doesn't change. But the, your angle to it does. And that was causing some problems today. So it's okay to do this and use this technique. I use it quite a bit. But if you're not really accustomed to using 3ds Max very well, what you're going to do is try to rotate things and you're just going to kind of screw everything up so instead of doing that let's go ahead and just do a reset we're going to go back to what we originally did and just use a textured plane okay so the same thing applies if you're using a top-down image you want to use your top view to make your plane so we're going to go to the Create panel, Geometry, Standard, Primitives, Plane. Draw out a plane. Now let me show you that again, because this is a problem some of you guys are having. When you choose a tool and you're selecting Plane, I'm going to draw a plane. And you draw out the plane with the, your left mouse button and then release you're still creating planes so if you just try to start clicking here well now I'm making another plane so when you do this you have plane selected draw your plane then when you're finished right click and as you can see I'm now out of the plane tool okay so get into the habit of once you're done creating something right click to get out of that tool or else you're going to be creating all kinds of craziness 
Now the next thing we're going to do is go into our, our material editor, the M key. M is in mic. And when we hit the M key this comes up, which you may have the slate material editor come up as default. And that is not what we're going to be using. Okay? What we're going to be using is the compact material editor. All right, so what we do here, we go into the diffuse channel. And again, what this means is your colors, okay? Specular is the brightness, and ambient has to do with that as well. So we're going to go into our diffuse channel. We're going to select bitmap, and we're going to go to our same images, use a knife body, hit open, we make sure that show end result and show shaded material in viewport are selected. Now we're going to take this material, that's what we've just done, we've created a material with the colors being a bitmap. The bitmap is going to be the actual picture of the knife that we're using to model off of. And we're going to apply this material, this texture, to the plane. So this is what we end up with. Okay. Now a couple hotkeys here. Remember the G key, G is in go, turns off your grid. F3 turns on and off your texture. F4 turns on and off your wireframe. Okay, we want wireframe off, we want the grid off and we want the texture to be actually showing. Okay. Now what we did today, we used shapes, we went to create, shapes, and an ingon. And someone asked me in class, well, wouldn't it be easier just to, you know, use a spline to draw this out? Yes, it would. But here's the thing. The purpose of this knife, the Swiss Army knife, is not to really practice modeling as much as it is practice using the different tools that we're going to use to model. We want to get very comfortable with using these. So although, yes, using a spline, drawing a line, would be the easier way to make this, we don't want to do that and the reason is because we want practice with some of the other things. We've already practiced with splines. So yeah, we could go in and make a spline and we could move around the vertices to the place we want them to go. Sure. We could do that, but we don't want to do that. <clears throat> we want to practice with some of the other tools. Spline modeling is very easy to do, yeah, of course but there are other ways to do things and we're not going to be able to do everything with splines so we're going to try to do a little bit of box modeling you can see this line messing up well that's the reason or the reason for that is because this ver uh, vertex is a bezier curve which we'll talk about more about that later we can easily just set that to smooth and it'll fix that little problem you saw. So could we do that? Yes, we could. But we're going to practice with Ingon instead. So that's what we did today, and that's what we're going to continue to do here. So we create our Ingon. And it should be about a good size. And remember, after you're done with a tool, we're still on the Ingon tool. If we keep drawing, we're just going to keep drawing Ingons. We don't want to do that. We want to right click to leave the tool. Okay. Let's go ahead and go into our modify. Change the sides to 10 again. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to up the ante a little bit and make this 12 sides. Okay. The reason being is that way we can move some of the verts around a little bit more. All right. Try to line up your ingon. 
so it lines up with this curve. We don't care about this. It doesn't matter. Now what we want to do is if we take it and we just look at this the way it is now and we look into our tools and we just say okay well we're going to make this I'm going to go ahead and just extrude this the way it is I don't really like doing it that way because we can't really adjust anything yet okay but if we go back just to our end gone okay and from here we convert this to an editable spline then we can go in and mess around with our vert uh, vertices a little bit you know kind of line them up a little bit get them exactly the way we want them so we don't have to do it later we want to move this one down we want to move this one up so we already have our straight line started move this one back up move this one up as well to try and match that up and it's good enough a uh, little bit more up. if it starts to when you're messing it with the uh, the mouse you're messing with it with the mouse if you need a little bit more precision as you can see it's not quite as precise as I would like so I have to keep messing with it messing with it what you can do instead is you can come down here and these are adjustments as well and you can use the spinner to just change it here you can also just type in the the value you want as well alright so we're this far and now if we just go ahead and do an extrude instead of just doing it straight from the end gone we won't have to go in and make those adjustments we're making an extrude the way it is here we'll add some amount and see it's it's extruding the way we had it instead of just doing it from the end gone and we have to go back in and move the verts around but now instead of moving one vert we're moving two or three at a time depending on how many segments you have added in all right we're going to make this two segments and what that means is around this way see you can see if we can add more segments if we want we want to only add one for now the goal is to block things in as simple as possible first now once you have that then you we can go in and add more detail later but for right now this is what we want to do alright so after we do that we go to collapse all converts it to an editable mesh we want to do this again and make this an editable poly now the reason we want to do this and I'll show you real fast if we go into editable mesh you see you have five choices Vert uh, vertex, edge, face, polygon and element if you go down you also see one other thing where is your bridge tool it's not there and it's a very useful tool and we want that if we convert this to an editable poly and we go down well here we have our bridge tool excellent now there's another thing too um, with editable mesh you can actually show your normals we haven't talked about that yet so when we, you convert it to editable mesh sometimes you want to check your normals and what that is and I'll explain it in class it's just the direction your textures are facing sometimes whenever you use a modifier your textures will actually be facing inside it'll be inside out but we'll get to that later okay so let's go from here and this is about where we ended in class not quite but pretty close here we have a little bit of a malfunction I'm going to fix this real quick alright same thing here alright now let's grab some polygons we want to grab these ones 
and as you can see, same as in class, we got the ones on the inside and we have the ones on opposite ends. Delete, and this is where we ended in class. You just have a C. Again, could we have done this with a spline? Yes, we can, but we want to practice using the other things like the extrude modifier. We wanted to use that. Uh, would we have to use that with splines as well? Yes, of course, but this is setting us up to do a little bit of box modeling. And we're going to be doing a lot of this in class. We'll, do, we'll be doing more box modeling than we will spline modeling. So let's just go ahead and get into that practice now. All right. So if we look, all of our vertices are lined up. This right here is the shadow. So don't worry about the shadow. It's trying to tell you, hey, wait, your thing is not right. But it actually is correct. Our vertices are all in the correct place. This is just shadow coming from the light. Okay? And to prove that to you, I can actually grab our plane, our reference image plane, and move it. And you can see the shadow is actually changing. And we want to go ahead, while we're at it, go to Object Properties of the Plane, and turn Show Frozen in Gray off. And let's go ahead and just freeze this so we can't mess with that. All right, now this is where we ended in class today. I'm going to go ahead and proceed now with what the other things we're going to do for next class are. We're going to complete the top, okay? And we're also going to complete the other section of the knife that we started. We're going to do that with spline modeling, okay? Now, let's go ahead and see what we can do here. So we have our editable poly, and we see that it's lined up perfectly. And what we see here is that we have polygons all the way around. We have pretty much three vertex, uh, vertices per end. Okay. Now, let me explain to you what an extrude modifier is. And we've already seen it. You've seen what it does. It takes a line, or a, well, generally it's lines. It's, you're working with lines here. And it pulls one line, and it duplicates the line, and then makes a polygon from that line. Now, let me show you what I mean. Let me, it's easier to show you than to explain. Let's grab an edge. Let's grab this, let's get full screen here. Let's grab this edge, okay? And let's extrude this. Now when we do this, you see what it's doing? this tool it's probably easier it's making a duplicate of the line and then making geometry in between the duplicate and the original see so what we want to do here we want to grab these two edges and in 3ds max the hot key or the key for selecting more than one thing is control just like files click this hold down control select this and now you have both of them as you see okay and what we want to do here is we're going to make an extrusion and try to take up half of the knife. And while we're doing that, let's go ahead and grab these other edges as well from the top. Okay? So we're going to do both sides at once. Let's go to extrude. And it's going the wrong way. Let's try 
I going to world? Huh, weird. Alright, I don't know why I have, was having that little glitch, but I reloaded the file and it seems to be working fine now. Now, we're going to use the shortcut for extrude and what that is, is the shift key. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold down shift. Actually, I only have the one selected, so let me get these other two. And to deselect something, you hold down Alt and select it, and it'll deselect that. See? Hold down Control, select something, hold down Alt, it deselects something. With your current selection group, I should say. Alright, so let's switch to the top view. Hold down Shift, and let's pull out. Alright, as you can see, we're not really pulling the line, we're making another line. Okay, let's continue, make another line. And that's a little too far. Camtasia seems to be making my computer run very slow. But we will survive. That's good enough. So, we have almost half of the length, more or less, of the knife. And we can move our vertices around if we want to adjust that a little bit. Kind of space these out some. seems okay. We have about half of the knife. So, uh, what are, where do we go from here? You've got a couple things you could do. You could copy this and you know, just put it over. Oh, I see a little problem we have here. Move this over. Okay. That's close enough. But what we're going to use is the mirror tool. And you'll see this is at the top, it's right here, mirror. And when we hit mirror, at first it looks like we screwed something up, but we really didn't. We want to make a copy of this. And as you can see, now we have the copy, but we need to add an offset to this. We need to move it over. And you don't want to line up the points here. What you want to line up is to make sure that the line is equal to the other curve on the other side. And that looks good enough. Let's do that. Hit OK. And what this does is we have now two objects. See, when we select this one, we don't select the other one. Uh, we don't want vertices. Thank you very much. So we have two different objects. Now, where do we go from here? Well, here we need to select one object and we want to bridge from this one to this one. We want to take these edges and bridge it over. What bridge does is it makes a piece of geometry in between two lines or two polygons. But the problem here is that you can't bridge something in two different objects. You, it just doesn't let you do it. So what we need to do is make this one object. So what we do is grab one of the objects, hit attach. You make sure you're not in sub-object mode. Okay. You hit attach. Select the second object. 
right click to get out of the attach tool and there we go now this is one object now we grab the edge and as you can see it grabs the edges that we had previously selected but just for argument of sake let's go in full screen here let's grab this edge and let's go to grab the other one and click bridge same thing here grab this one grab this one bridge same thing at the top this one and this one bridge and this one and this one bridge now as you can see we have completely enclosed our frame for our knife let's keep going on now the reason we want to do convert this to an editable poly as you can see we have this border now this selection but you select something like the top ring and it selects the entire thing and that's what we want to do we want to get the bottom one first we're going to select the bottom you know any of these lines on the bottom and that means we selected all of the ones on the bottom and we want to go from border we want to select this button cap and what it does is it fills in the hole in that border so we've created this piece of geometry that completely fills in that hole. We're going to do the same thing on the top. Cap. See so what we have. But if you've ever seen a Swiss Army knife, here's the thing. It's rounded at the top. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our scale tool and we're going to resize this. Okay, let's turn off our selection bracket so we can see exactly what we're doing. Now as we change the size of this, we see a little bit of stretching going on. So we're just going to do it just a bit. Just a little bit. Okay. Look around, make sure it's all rounded, but just a touch. And then we're going to move it down. So we go to our move tool. Move this down. see now we want to do this more but what we need to do is make more geometry so how do we do this well let's go into polygon and select that big piece now we're going to use something called the inset tool here now what the inset tool is is it duplicates every line on the, the every border of the, the polygon you have selected copies them and moves them inside okay Again, this is easy to, easier to demonstrate than it is to explain, so let me show you. Inset tool. There we go. We've created another piece of geomet geometry inside the border of that other one. And let's make this a little bit bigger than that. About like this. Now we can go to our move tool. Move that up to create more of a rounded effect I think that might be too much yeah that's too much about like that and we'll do one more inset we'll make this one pretty large maybe not that large though maybe like this go to our move tool again and move that up slightly and as you can see we have a nice rounded edge on our top now and if we want to we could add a little bit of character to this we could do another inset just a bit for a slight edge about like that and do it one more time but this time go to move tool 
to move that down. Maybe not that much, just a bit. And we've added a little bit of character to the knife. Okay. We can turn off our edge faces and see what we have. Looking good. If we wanted to, we could go and see what this looks like if it was smooth. Now how you do that is you go back to your original editable poly and click on Use NERMS Subdivision and it gives a little bit of a smoothing look to something. These little areas here we could easily fix that. We're not going to really worry about it right now. We have the look that we want. We don't. Only, we're not even going to use the smoothing. We're not going to make this a high-res model. We're going to keep it low definition for now while we're learning. So this is what we're going to do next week. We're going to complete the top of our knife like this. And we're also going to complete the other uh, or the rest of the blade layer. And we'll take a look at that um, maybe in another video, but if not, definitely in class next week if we get this finished in time. All right. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you maybe learned something or at least got a little bit of preparation for what we're going to be doing next week.